we will have our article of faith by Sister Kamara Townsend, followed by the Church Covenant, Brother Cameron Geek G, and the Deacons of Devotion by the Deacons of Central Missionary Baptist Church, in that order. I'll be doing the Our Club of Faith Ready Read. We believe the scriptures teach that humanity was created in the holiness under the law of the Maker, but voluntary church fell from the holy and happy state, and in consequence of which all mankind are now sinners now by the concentrate for choice, being by the nature utterly void of that holiness required by the law of God positively inclined to evil, therefore under just commence to enter an honorable law without defense or excuse. Will you please remain standing for the church covenant? Ready, read. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith have been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the present God enter in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church, to not to spirit this alcohol, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the morning's ministry, and the position of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to our attacking, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be those in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we move from this place, we as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry our spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now to him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever. Amen. Central Baptist Church. Lots of people, 45 years working for this city. Amen. Chauffeur called Dick McKee. And every time somebody laughs in your face, I want y'all to know this. Yep. This is your man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, let me go on and get started. I just like to have fun, and that's the way I do at Century. They know I have them laughing and everything, but I'm at home, y'all. Yeah, this is one of my men right here. <laughs> Let it be real, let it be real, oh, let it be real, oh, let it be real, oh, 
Good evening, church. Let us go before the throne of grace this evening. Oh, gracious heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, we are Lord, thank you and we praise you for allowing us to come together for the praise and worship of you, Lord God. As we continue to celebrate 118 years of fellowship in this congregation, Lord God. Forgive us of each and every sin, each and every transgression we have committed. As we open the door to the place of fellowship, open the door to our minds, Lord. Heavenly Father, help us, Heavenly Father, to put you first in all that we do, that you be praised, you be worshipped, we as children of God be sanctified, strengthened and comfort, and that Satan, in the name of Jesus, through the compelling of the Holy Spirit, be horrified. We thank you, Lord God. Bless our pastor. Continue to strengthen him, Lord God. Bless the pastor, uh, or the preacher tonight, Lord God. Give him what he needed and bring forth the word, Lord God, that we be encouraged. But most of all, you be praised. We love you, we love you, we love you. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. We, we're going to continue with the hymn. I'm looking over to see if we're not doing the hymn, but I, I thank you, brother, for, <laughs> for uh, allowing me to stand here with you all. So we all going to join in with this hymn, a charge to keep a hell, a God to glorify. A charge.
like to thank um, our deacons, especially our deacon from New Central for helping us with the devotion. So that concludes our devotional period. Thank you so much. Again, like to thank the deacons of 4th Street and Central Baptist Church for that spiritual and uplifting devotion. Next, we will have our scripture by Deacon William Potter, our welcome by Sister Agnes Griffin, a selection by Central Missionary Baptist Church, and recognition and appreciation of our ministries by Pastor Flake. In that order. Once again, good evening, church. Good evening. I'll be reading from Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2, from the ESV translation. And it goes as follows Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul and forget not all his benefits. And may the Lord add a blessing of the reading of his word. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, on behalf of our pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. J.H. Flakes III, and our First Lady, Sister Jacqueline Flakes, and our First Lady Emeritus, who's not here, uh, Sister Robita Gaines Flakes, and on, the, on behalf of the entire membership of the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. We would like to welcome you to help us celebrate in our 118th church anniversary. This is a celebration because God has brought us 118 years in his service. And we're here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. You know, we are Karen Sharon Fruit Bearer Ministry, uh, anchored in the, uh, no, uh, Karen Sharon Fruit Bearer Ministry where we believe in the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb, and we're uh, anchored in uh, the victory of Jesus the Christ. And um, somewhere tonight, we hope that you will feel that. And we're asking you all to come in and help us celebrate on this occasion. Now, uh, Fourth Street, we invited them to our party. So that means, you know, they're going to follow our lead. So we have to get into a celebratory mood. And I know some of us just got off work because I am sleeping. But, uh, you know, we got a, uh, <laughs> a continuation from uh, Sunday night. We got to open our mouths and say something. You know, it's just not enough for you to clap your hands. I mean, if you think about, you know, 118 years, that's a mighty, mighty long time that God has blessed the, uh, 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 this institution to carry out his ministries. And we are truly, truly blessed for that. And then we're looking for, we won't be here, but, you know, for this church to carry on for another 118 years. So you are welcome, Central Baptist Church. We invited you to share in this uh, celebration with us. And we're not going to tell you to sit back and relax. You know, you can relax once you get home. We just want you to get involved. So, again, you are so very welcome.
Central Missionary Baptist Church, amen, choir, amen. But we want to, first of all, acknowledge all of you here today. We want to acknowledge and thank God for the Central Missionary Baptist Church from Ellerslie, amen, amen. We are looking forward to Pastor McKelton being here and, and sharing with us what God has shared with him. Uh, and we also want to just also acknowledge the deacons and officers of uh, Central Mi Missionary Baptist Church. Also, Miss McKelton, God bless you. Thank you for being here in choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you all so very much for being here. And the members of Central Missionary Baptist, Central Missionary Baptist Church for being here with us tonight. We want to take this opportunity to thank those ministries, those leaders, those uh, servants who have given their time and devoted their time over this year, and we want to say thank you. This is the night that we recognize and acknowledge the ministries who God used to keep this church vital and keep this church community-oriented, community-focused, meeting the needs of our community and beyond. And so we want to say thank you to those who have been a part of these ministries. So if you're here tonight, we want to ask if you would just stand and let us say thank you. Last night, we recognized ministries on last night, but we want to take time to recognize ministries tonight as well. So we want to usher's ministry. If you would please stand, usher's ministry. Amen. Thank you, usher's ministry. Sister so, so Smith, chair, we thank you so very much for you all's leadership. God bless you. Ms. Lowry, she's involved in the, on the youth ministry as well. I, I, I saw you. Amen. So we thank God for all of you who work not only with our adult ministry, youth ministry, our adult ushers ministry, but also with our um, youth ushers. So if you work also with the youth ushers, I want to ask if you would stand. If we have any youth ushers that's here with us, I know we are very strong in terms of our youth ushers. I know very strong. Thank you so very much for your presence and your being here. I want to also recognize in, uh, the program ministry. I know the program ministry is working hard and they basically plan the total schedule for the church. Uh, so the program ministry, that should be every chair that, that actually chairs a ministry. You are a part of the program ministry. Amen. You help with making sure that we do not have the bumping into each other, the scheduling conflict. And we thank Ms. Faith Stevens and Miss Rayborn, they do a wonderful job in helping to develop the, helping to schedule and organize the, the ministries and the programs for the church, having it ready by the time we go to the retreat um, and um, making sure that we all know exactly what to anticipate uh, going into the first part of the year and the remaining of the new year. So, uh, finance ministry, if you're a part of the finance ministry, we're going to ask if you would stand. I know they stay, they work hard under the capable leadership of Sister M.A. Dowdell. We thank God for you. They, they stay on, in, not on, on, in, in evenings and, and show up during the week, make sure that pastor don't have to handle no money. <laughs> don't have to count it, don't have to log it, don't have to, amen, but they do a wonderful, wonderful job on Sundays and during the week, uh, and we are very grateful 
for their commitment and dedication. They work so hard, they have to order themselves food. Amen. <laughs> so we thank God for them. Amen. And they travel with the pastor. We thank God for your, your willingness to travel with the pastor as well. What about the benevolence ministry? This is a ministry that really touches all of our hearts. You're all a part, but our core benevolence ministry, those who work without the benevolence ministry, please stand. Sister Robina Flakes is the chair. We actually thank Ms. Ingram. We thank all others uh, who work with the benevolence. They actually uh, have appointments where people come, and we look at, they make recommendations, and we try and help uh, first and foremost, those who are members of the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. But we also thank God that he allows us to have you provide the generous resources that we can also help those who are not a member of the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. So we thank God for your security ministry. We're going to ask those who are part of our security ministry. We ask that you would please stand. Thank you so very much, all of you who make it possible to make sure that we have a very safe campus. We have a very safe place of worship. We believe that God protects us. But he said, don't tempt me. <laughs> With all that's going on in the world today, we thank God for these men and women who makes it possible that we can come and not have a worry in the world. Amen. We're in one of the most safest places you will ever be in Columbus. We're three blocks from the police department. <laughs> we have a more speed dial. Amen. Amen. But we have men who are very astute and alert and discerning. Not just when someone come through these doors, but they can see them from the parking lot. Amen. They can see every nick, nick and cranny. Amen, within this church. So we are very, very blessed that we have a wonderful, proactive uh, security team. So the campus ministry, we want to ask the campus ministry to stand under the direction of Sister Jacqueline Flakes. We are so thankful that we make these connections. Thank you all so very much for working as a team and making sure we're connected with the campuses and we're getting uh, information or getting packages out to students who are in higher learning. They are leaving home, some for the first time and some that's been there for a while. But these uh, campus uh, ministry uh, servants, they make sure that we are staying connected. And so we are thankful for them. Uh, one of the things that we will have going forward, we're going to be asking for 25 persons to adopt the student going into next year. <laughs> Amen. That means that you want to invite them or go and pick them up to come to the worship experience. Also, you want to, if you want to take them to dinner, lunch, Amen. Give them some noodles. Amen. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> we just want you all to make connection and have relationship. Also, we want to thank God for our dance and drama ministry. If you're in the dance and drama ministry, we have a wonderful dance and drama ministry under Miss uh, Aggie Griffin, uh, Sharon Lumpkin, and also Brandy Shokes and others uh, who are part of our dance and drama ministry. That comes under our youth ministry, so we thank God for Miss Sharonda Porter. Uh, who's the chair of our youth ministry. Thank you so very much. They do a wonderful, wonderful job across the state in the, in the Mount Calvary Association. And so when we take delegates to the national, we've had those who've danced uh, in the National Baptist Convention as well. So we're very grateful. Our health care ministry, we ask that you, if you're a part of our health care ministry, thank you all so very much. Keeping us health conscious. Amen. Sister Andrea Davis, our chair, we thank God for Sister uh, the Bulette Hooks and Miss Jeanette and also Sister Peaches uh, Rivers and did I see anybody else over there? I thought I saw somebody else and part of our health care ministry. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Sister Willa Cooper and others uh, who may be a part. If you're a part of the health care ministry and I didn't see Miss Miss Cusack back there, amen. Anybody else? Um, who? who Miss Lois Williams, amen, she's part of the health care ministry. So all you all, y'all help us keep our blood pressures down. Y'all keep us conscious, and we could thank you so very much. Also, Miss Naya, she's a dietitian in her, in her, her trained days, amen. Uh, and, uh, and, and so she helps us. She gave us a nutrition. She's a nutritionist, actually. She gave us a nutritional uh, menu, and so we want to continue to help our hospitality men cook with turkey necks. 
this is a good time, isn't it? Turkey next. We want, we need desserts for Saturday. Bring all of your best meat, best meats, your best salads, your best whatever for the taste of Fourth Street on Saturday. Amen. And then we need desserts for the church anniversary uh, on that Sunday at three. So we ask that you would please come and take your blood pressure medications. Amen. We don't want nobody, you know, take your blood pressure medication. If you're not supposed to eat certain things, don't eat certain things. Our wedding ministry, amen. We have one of the best coordinators, uh, Miss Eva Campbell. Uh, one of the things we do not do, we don't allow everybody to come. We believe the wedding is a worship. It's sacred. Amen. So Miss Eva Campbell makes sure that she consults with those who may have their coordinators, uh, but she consults on behalf of the church in letting persons know what they can and cannot do. So uh, we thank God for her and Sister Barbara Mack works with them and others work with her as well. Uh, our prison ministry, if you're involved in our prison ministry, we thank God for our son's pulpit helpers, Miss Ann over there. God bless you. Thank you all so very much uh, to go and visit those and their others uh, who go and visit Reverend Lawrence and Reverend Johnson and, and others who work with our prison ministry, making sure that they know that they are not forgotten, but also meets the, the command that God gives in Matthew 28. And then our Recovery Through Christ ministry, if you're a part of our Recovery Through Christ ministry, we thank God for you all so very much to make sure that those who are in bondage and enslaved to an addiction, that they can come on Saturday and they know that the way to be freed is through Jesus the Christ. So thank you so very much, Kim. Thank you so very much, Brother Wilson. Thank you so very much for Saranda and others who work with this ministry on Saturday at 9 a.m. We also ask that if you work with the evangelism ministry, that should be everybody in the house, but our core evangelism ministry, thank you so very much. We thank God for you all. We thank God for uh, J.D. Johnson. We thank God for Reverend Lawrence who lead in that ministry, but also those who come alongside them and uh, go out and make sure that people know about the good news of Jesus the Christ. Uh, thank you. Our hospitality ministry, Debbie Moore is our hospitality chair. Have one of the best hospitality, Miss Evans and Brother Wilson and others, Miss Peaches. The deacon wives, I know work, the deacons work in that hospitality ministry along with others, Deacon Dixon and others who work in that ministry, cooks and all who come and make sure that we have not only very attractive food, but real good tasting food. Amen. So we're very thankful for the hospitality ministry, the married couples ministry, the married couples ministry. This is a ministry where we believe that God has told us marriage is a good thing. We thank God for the leadership of Sir Michael Jones and also Kelly Jones. We had a wonderful, wonderful film, The Question of Faith, on Saturday. We are planning to go to Destin, Florida, the first week in December. Amen. We got a cruise planned. Amen. We've got a wonderful uh, plan for those who come uh, who will go uh, to Destin, Florida, the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Is that right? 6th, 7th, and 8th. And uh, so we are very, very uh, much looking forward to that trip. Amen. Uh, the church clerks team, this is the team that makes sure that everything is recorded, everything is documented, minutes are recorded of every meeting, of church, particularly with our pastor's cabinet as well as our conferences. We thank God for Jackie um, McCall. She is the church clerk. Stand up, Jackie. Amen. She has a wonderful team. You saw these ladies who are part of the team who make sure that everything that is going on in terms of the official business of the church is actually documented and recorded. We thank God for you. Uh, we also ask that the Bomb and Gilead ministry, this is the Bomb and Gilead ministry. If you're part of the Bomb and Gilead ministry, one of the assistant chairs, uh, Deacon Tharp, and also Gloria Weston Smart. This is our cancer support ministry because we believe that when, the, when a person gets diagnosed with cancer, it does not mean death. God can use that to show Christ. Amen. Do we have any cancer survivors up in here? If you're a cancer survivor, why don't you just stand? If you're not ashamed, let somebody know that God is able. Amen. We thank God for these. So this is, we thank God for you. 
and those who have not gotten there yet to, to just basically stand up, but you keep on knowing that there is support. You don't have to walk the journey by yourself. Amen. There is support for you. Is there a bomb in Gilead? What do you say? Yes, there is. Amen. He heals not only the wounded soul, but he heals sin sick souls. He also pour, he poured salve over. Amen. Uh, amen. So we thank God for the Bomb and Gilead ministry. Thank you so very much for allowing me to say thank you. On tomorrow night, we're going to do the prayer warriors, the pastoral relations, fruit basket, thrift house, deacons, laymen's, deacon wives, young adults, visitation, SWAT singles, golden ages, pulpit helpers, ministers wives, trustees, proofreaders, church anniversary, and pick them will be acknowledged on tomorrow. So we pray that you would still go out. I know many of y'all work in various ministries, so that means y'all come back tomorrow too. <laughs> Thank y'all so very much. Tell somebody, smile, smile. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Did I miss anyone? Did I mention? Okay. Yep. That, there we go. We're going to ask now that we want to thank Sister Julian for such a wonderful job on last night in her in worship leading. Amen. And we want to thank Sister Deborah Seymour, amen, for tonight. We look forward. And now what we're going to ask the Central Missionary Baptist Church to give us selection, and then I'll be back to introduce the pastor, of the, the preacher of the night. God bless you. Thank you so very much for your patience.
that I could take back all my troubles to. When I'm down and out, I don't see no, no way through. many know and believe the Lord will make a way? How many know that the Lord has made a way? Already. Amen. So we give him praise. I've been given the honor as well as the privilege to stand before you tonight to introduce to some and to present to, to others uh, the pastor of the Central Missionary Baptist Church. He comes to us as a preacher of the unadulterated gospel of Jesus the Christ. He come to us as a servant leader of God's people. He comes to us as a married pastor. He come to us as a family man. But he also come to us as a lover of people. Amen. One who cares about people. And so we're very thankful that he took time out of his busy schedule and the church took time out of their busy schedule to be with us tonight 
to celebrate 118 years that God has preserved this church at this place. And so I present to you, introduce to you, Pastor Joseph McKelton, pastor of the Central Missionary Baptist Church in Ellerslie, Georgia. So after the choir sings, or however he wants to come to us, I want us to raise our right hand and say, Pastor McKelton, preach the word. Let us see Christ through you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let us receive him after the choir sings or however he comes in his own way. Man, certainly we, our choir say, Pastor, can you just, we just gonna jump by that next song if you let us jump by it. So we gonna let you jump on by it, amen. Certainly we thank God for that wonderful introduction, amen. amen. Giving praise to God and honor to the angel of this house, uh, Pastor Dr. J.H. Flakes, amen, the third. And thank God for him. And again, we thank God for that gracious introduction. We just love the Lord. We're so honored and blessed to be here. And certainly, we want to recognize uh, my wife. I see she's in the house. She's back here, First Lady. She's back here in the choir. I have one of my daughters who's here. Certainly, we thank God for all of these men of God who are in the house. Uh, Y'all can get me with all the names. I got my son over here, Minister McGee, and, and I got uh, Pastor Small, Minister Small, and Allison. Yeah, Reverend Allison, and certainly uh, George Schultz. Did I get it right? Amen. Thank God for this great musician, one of the greatest musicians on the keyboards over here. Yeah, yeah, Pastor Johnson, and we thank God for you here, our bass player, and Brother Warren, and our brother... White, who's filling in, Rodney, who's filling in. It's just so wonderful to have him. We just thank God for all of you who are here on tonight. We recognize certainly the officers of this great church and all of the deaconesses and all the officers who are here from Central Missionary Baptist Church, the deaconesses. We praise God for our choir who's singing out of their soul on tonight and our ushers who are standing dutifully on the door. It's good to be here. Amen. To all of the mothers in the house. Amen. All the mothers in the house, just raise your hand and say, I'm, here, I'm in the house. Amen. Yeah, without mamas, none of us will be here. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for all of the mothers, certainly, and all the fathers in the house and all of the ministries of this great church that are being celebrated. Uh, coming up to your church anniversary. So we say ditto, congratulations to all of you and your servitude unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. If you bow your head right where you are, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your presence and your power. We thank you and recognize you as God all by yourself. It's in you that we live. We move and have our being. Without you, oh God, we can do nothing, but with you we can do all things. And now, God, we surrender ourselves to you, asking that you would do what only you can do. Use this lump of clay in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way in this house, God. We ask that you would remove burdens and destroy yokes and loose shackles and save the unsaved. Deliver us, O oh God. Do it. Have your own way. We need you now. We need you now, God. We thank you for your preaching power. In Jesus' name. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. 
for your glory, Lord. I will do, I'll do, I'll do anything just to see you, just to see you, Lord, to behold you as my King. Lord, if I any worshipers in the house man and near of for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory Just to see you, Lord, eh, and behold you as my King. Oh, I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Anybody want to be where God is? be where you are. Said I want to be, said I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are, Lord. Gotta be where you are. For your glory. I I'll do, I'll do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Joy is where you are. Joy is where you are, Lord. Peace is where you are. Peace is where you are. Love, Lord. Love is where you are. Love is where you are. Ah, got anybody in here who don't mind worshiping on a Tuesday night? Yeah, somebody that doesn't mind giving God glory on a Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody that loves God on Tuesday night. Somebody that's victorious on Tuesday night. Woo! Wanna be where you are. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 If I get a little messed up, I'm not going to say excuse me. I'm just going to get messed up. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we want to do our best to stand up, speak up, shut up. And sit down. Yeah. I want to 
stay too long. It might blow my chance for coming back again. So I'm going to try and make sure that I can be on my best behavior. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the possibility of what just could happen. Amen? Just for a little while, if you would, I trust God that protocol has truly been established. If I overlooked anyone, charge it to my head and not my heart. We have no intention of overlooking anybody, but I believe we done touched on Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Yeah, I believe we have. So, so, uh, so let, let's look on here. If you would please turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 19 through 20. I want to appreciate Minister Small for attending to me even as we uh, came in, and we thank God for the hospitality Pastor Flakes and, and certainly uh, the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. But from, uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 6, we're going to look at verses number 19 through 20. Trust God that we'll get the cross-reference over in Jeremiah chapter number 18, verses 1 through 6, a familiar passage. But for the sake of time, let's just read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses number 19 through 20. If it's customary, is it customary to stand when we sit for the word of God? Oh, amen. Should I read and I'll read in your hearing? Amen. I have the King James Version. We ask that you would just simply follow along with us with that which you have in your hand. Amen. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 19 through 20, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And from this subject, God has given us the subject, the, or from this text, given us the subject just for a little while. Um, Lord, deliver me from myself. Lord, Deliver me from myself. Somebody tell your neighbor, just turn and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, excuse me, but do you want to get better? Ah, now you got to look, you got to say that, then you got to turn your head pretty quick because somebody might get an attitude towards you. You mess around in the house and you turn around and ask them, tell my neighbor you want to get better. But go ahead and take a risk and look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor, do you want to get better? Yeah, I'm convinced. God knows I've been preaching long enough to know that there are some folk, Pastor, who just don't seem, I said seem now, yeah, just don't seem to want to get better. Y'all know what we're talking about here? Yeah, but first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, we, 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 we're made to know that according to the book of Psalms, number 51, verse number 5, that we are all conceived, all of us were conceived in sin and shapen in iniquity. It means that all of us came here with the same birth defect. Sinner, sinner. We came here sinful. We came here with wrongdoing in our heart. We came here with wickedness in our heart. Oh yeah, we came here just, we figured out how to lie real early. Because we fooled mama when nothing was wrong with us. Yeah, yeah, we weren't wet. We weren't hungry. None of that. But we made mama think that we were just about to lose it all. Yeah, we learned how to, how to do that real at an early age. Amen. And so then we all know that we've come here with the birth defect called sin. And unless we are born again then we can neither see 
nor enter into the kingdom of God. That's scripture. That's in St. John chapter number 3, verse number 3 and verse number 5. The Bible declares that, that we, we got to be born of the water and the spirit. Water being the word of God. Amen. Indeed, the book of Ephesians chapter 5 lets us know that we are washed by the water of the word. Secondly, after receiving salvation, it is vitally important for the believer to take honest inventory, uh, honest inventory of his or her spiritual condition to be an effective witness in God's kingdom. Yet yeah, to be an effective witness now. Uh, you see, because the, 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 the enemy, what he, the enemy seeks to do, certainly for the believer, is that I'm not a lawyer, but I've been made to understand that if a lawyer wants to win a case, then 101, he wants to discredit the witness. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So then, what, what the enemy seeks to do is that the reason he's, one of the reasons he stands around and seeks to accuse us, you see, the accuser of the brethren is he wants to, he wants to try to report back to God, say, uh-huh, I saw what Brother Walls was doing, and he said he loved you. Yeah, and in that, then, he'll find himself discrediting the witness. And so unless we take, uh, unless we take a real honest inventory of our spiritual condition, then we can find ourselves not being an effective witness in the kingdom of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? So it's in this place now, it's in this place, you see it effective, it is in this place that we are made to understand the nature and the depth of the spiritual transformation God desires to work in us. Yeah, we take inventory because, quite frankly, some of the stuff that we as born-again believers can find ourselves walking in, the shelf life for it has been over a long time ago. Y'all with me on that? Yeah, you can't keep milk on the shelf for, for, but for so long. It has an expiration date. Yeah, there are items in the store. You can't sell chicken but for so long. It has an expiration date. The bread that's out there is only going to be there for so long. They're going to pull it off the shelf because it has an expiration date. And so there are some things about all of us. Ah, yeah, let's just hold the door now. If you sat down, just hold the door. But there's some things about all of us, yeah, that God desires to deal with. Yeah, there's things, some things that we've become so comfortable with that we don't even remind, have, we don't mind walking with it even if it's stale. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? So then, it's critical for the people of God to know who you are and under whose authority we live. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's critical that we know who we are and under whose authority we live. So then, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verses number 19 through 20, Paul begins to share here with the church of Corinth. And Corinth, and he says, what? He said, let me, let me let you in on something because it looks to me that you think you seem to think that you belong to you. Yeah, it seems to me that you're thinking that you do what you want, when you want, and how you want to do it, and it ain't nobody business if I do. Looks like to me that you're walking around declaring that I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. As far as I'm concerned, it starts with me and it ends with me. Y'all hear what I'm saying here. So then he said, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's what my Bible says now. The temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Ah, news flash for all of us, and we're made to those of us who already know, but we, another news flash comes to us who, who, who do know and those who don't, that I don't belong to me. When we give our lives to God, we belong to him. Yeah, 
He said, what? No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He said, look, let me drive this thing deeper. He said, for you are bought with the price. I paid the cost for you to belong to me. Yeah, you received my gift of salvation. And so uh, you exchanged, I exchanged my life for your life. And so I don't live in the basement. Uh, I don't live in the family room. I live in the master suite of your temple. Yeah, and wherever God is, he takes over. Oh, yeah, I ain't with us. I said, wherever God is, he takes over. Yeah, he takes over wherever God is. And so, and so he says, he, he already is over everything. But when he lives inside of us, then he takes over our lives. For you're bought with the prizes that therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. You've been bought with a prize. I paid for you on the cross. I shed my precious blood for you. And you belong to me. Yeah, and so except we, church, embrace the need to be continually delivered from self, then we are subject to be held hostage to spiritual, the spiritually debilitating behavior. Yeah, yeah. If we, if we don't take inventory and recognize that self really is an issue. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? And I believe that anybody want to be delivered from anything, then you got to first recognize that you have a problem. What sometimes we don't want to do is that we want to recognize everybody else as the problem. But we don't want to look at ourselves as being the problem. Could it be that the problem is the one that I'm looking in the mirror Could it be that it may not be him, it may not be her, but it just may be me? Oh, I believe if I start with me, yeah, if I let God work with me, if I let him do a work in me, then I won't have time to worry about you. Yeah, I won't look so hard at you because it'll be so much that God's got to do in me. Wouldn't look too hard at you because I'd too, be too busy lying on the floor prostrate before God. Ah, Y'all here. Oh, Lord Jesus. And so, so then, so then, it's, it, 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 it's necessary that we embrace that we continually be delivered from self. We don't want to be weakened. We don't want to be weakened. We don't want our commitment to God to be weakened. We, we, we don't want our faith in God to ultimately be weakened. Listen, listen, look at Paul said in, 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 in Romans chapter number 7, verse number 18, Paul recognized this issue, that this thing called self and the flesh. He says in verse 18, he said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He said, for to, he said, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He said, even the same passage, he said, he said the, the good that I would do, I do not. And the very thing that I would not is the thing that I do. Yeah, he said, I find myself making promises to not only other folk, but I make promises to me, and I turn around and break my own promise. I ain't going to ask who's ever done that before. That means we're just everybody. Pretty much everybody in here made themselves a promise. And you broke your own promise before the day went out. Some of us make promises because we just want to get out of some of the stuff we found ourselves in. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I ain't getting no amen right there. I ain't getting no amen right there. But, 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 book of, look, the book of Galatians, Paul was, God was using Paul. In, in Galatians chapter number five, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to a close. He, he says in chapter number five, verse number 17, he, he recognized that my flesh, the flesh lusted against the spirit. 
and the spirit against the flesh. He says, and these two are contrary one to another. In other words, he said, flesh and the spirit is like oil and water. They just don't mix. You can put them in together, shake it up, look like they blend in, but all you got to do is when you set it down. Yeah, y'all hear what I'm saying? The water and the oil is gone. It's going to separate. So they just don't mix. And so oftentimes, Paul was, he was making the point here is that oftentimes we as believers, we allow our flesh to take precedence over the will of our spirit. Ah, because the Bible tells us in St. Matthew 26, around verse 41, 42, that the, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So then, uh, you see, God is always in agreement with himself. Yeah, he's never out of agreement with himself. And so because he lives inside of us, then he's always going to agree with himself. The question is, is whether or not we're willing to submit to the will of God. Lord, deliver me from myself. Yeah, because there's times where we want to go ahead and make the call and say, Lord, I heard what you said, but that's not how it's going to go today. I heard what you told me to do, but that's not where I'm going today. Yeah, I know what you're calling me to do, but Lord, all I'm saying is that will you please wait? Yeah, I, I, I know, I, I, look, I love you, Lord. I, I, I promise you that I'll go, but not this year. Let it begin in 2019 because I got 2018 all sold up, God. And if you just let everything roll just like it's rolling, you keep the money coming, keep my food coming, keep my husband and wife on point and bless my babies and all the things that I want to do. Oh, make sure that I make, oh, I got to have that cruise, Lord. So, yeah, you just keep it all coming and I'll get with you in 2019. If the Lord will it. Wait, you say, Pastor, I'll pray, I'll pray about it. <laughs> if the Lord will it. <sighs> Y'all laughed on that. Y'all must have heard that before. Heard that before. But as we come to a close, as we come to a close, I don't know about you, but I can testify for me that I need God to deliver me continually from myself. I find myself. You see, because, because see, flesh reacts to flesh. And if flesh hits flesh a certain way, flesh will buckle up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody just comes up and curses flesh out, then flesh just might. Somebody, you see, y'all finished the sentence. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't even finished it. I just, flesh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, somebody tell you a thing or two, then you're like, look here, wait. I know how to handle that. Yeah, I know how to handle that. You don't know where I'm from, baby. You hear? Yeah, you done struck the right note now. It's Monday morning, too. And I already don't want to be here, baby. It's on. And we run up in the we can't wait till to get to the house on Wednesday. Lord, forgive me. You know I'm your child. You know my heart. He said, Yeah, it came out Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know your heart. It came out Monday morning. But as for me now, and I'm going I'm closing right here. I'm closing right here. But 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 I got to say that as for me, Lord, this time it's personal. Yeah, this time it's personal. This, this time, Deacon Beasley, I've got to let it be real. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You see, uh, uh, this time because because it, 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 it's me, oh God. It's me. Standing in the need of deliverance. Not my mother. 
not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, I need you right now. And it's my desire uh, that you operate on me. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah. You see, I've, I've been told that, 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 that when, and I know it's true, that when the doctors designate that there's something going on in your body, after they let you know about what's going on, they come and they tell you, they say, Brother Lights and Sister Walls. Yeah, he said, we, we need to operate on you. But before we do, we've got to have your permission. Ah, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, if you don't tell us that we can operate, then we'll have to leave things right where they are. Now, I don't know about you, but I say, Lord, operate on me. You know my case, and you've already diagnosed my issue. Help me to not run from that which you've already shown me about me. Help me not to overlook that which you've already revealed about me. Help me not run from what you've already shown me about me. But Lord, operate on me. Do what only you can do. Put something in. Take something out. Watch me. Purge me with his up. Wash me and I'll be whiter, whiter than snow. I wish I had somebody in here who said, Lord, deliver me from myself. This is my earnest prayer. And this is my earnest plea. I'm calling upon you, Lord. And I'm asking you to temper, temper this vessel to carry the weight of your glory. Oh, you hear what I'm saying here? You see, I found out something in Matthew chapter 9. I found out in verse number 14 through verse number 17 uh, that you can't put new wine in an old bottle. Do you hear what I'm saying here? If you put new wine in old bottles, then the pressure would be too strong and the bottle won't be able to hold the weight of the pressure that the wine will put on the bottle. I also found out that you can't take old cloth, you hear a new cloth, and put it on old clothes. Do you hear what I'm saying here? Because when you wash the clothes, then it's going to pull back from where it was sewn in. And the hole will be bigger than it was before. So then I say, oh, Lord, do what you want to do in me. Do it like you did the down there at the potter's house when you showed Jeremiah. He said, go down there, Jeremiah, because I want to do something to Israel. I want to make them again another. So then Jeremiah, in chapter number 18, went down to the potter's house. He saw the potter with the clay on the wheel. Yeah, the wheel there, the play. The clay was not on the, on the wheel, but the clay was in the wheel of the potter who had the clay in his hand. And when the potter looked at the clay, he saw that the clay was mine in his hand. And he looked there and he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make me again another vessel. I'm going to fix this thing. I'm going to press it in where it needs to be pressed. I'm going to smooth it out where it needs to be smoothed out. I'm going to take this off because it's just not working there. I'm going to make me again another vessel. And I say, oh, Lord, make me again another vessel. Make me again another vessel. Deliver me from myself. I'm 
tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired. Something has got to change. Lord, deliver me from myself. And I see myself coming out, coming out. I'm stepping out. I'm not who I used to be. I'm stepping out. I'm not where I used to be. I'm stepping out. I'm not talking the way I used to talk. And not walking the way I used to walk. I'm not loving the way I used to love. I'm not giving the way I used to give. Lord, deliver me from myself. Deliver me from myself. And Jesus, I thank you that you came to do just that. You came down through 42 generations to deliver me from me. Destined for hell on a collision course with death, hell, and the grave. So then Jesus, Jesus, in the mercy of God stood between death, hell, and the grave. And, 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 and so I looked over and I said, I got to have mercy, oh God, because I'm about to run straight in to death, hell, and the grave. And the moment we grabbed mercy, God lifted us up and made us to escape. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, well, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where, where would I be? Great God Almighty. Hallelujah. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver us from ourselves. Now I know somebody in here has probably said, that preacher got issues, and I don't have any. I just want you to know, if that's what you think, Just that thought is an issue by itself. Amen. Door of the church is open. Maybe someone here. You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You've never asked him to forgive you. To come into your heart and save you a sinner. To wash you in his blood and be Lord of your life. If you don't know Jesus, if you're not certain that if you left this earth tonight that you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord, you can get to know Jesus now for yourself. You can't get there on grandmama's and granddaddy's coattail. You can't get there on uncle and auntie and, them and sisters and brothers. You've got to come to know Jesus for yourself. So if you're here and you're not saved, if I were you, I wouldn't wait another minute, not another second. God loves us so much. He died for us. Died on the cross and he rose on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And he stands waiting for you with his arms stretched wide. Is there one? To what his plans are. Oh, yeah. God has spoken yes to him. Let the church say is there one all over the house that desires to come? Now there may be someone here. You're saved. You're looking for a church home. And the Lord has moved upon you. That 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church is where you belong. You can come now, even now, under the leadership of this great man of God, Pastor J.H. Flakes III. You can come now. All over the house is there one. Say, amen. Yeah, God is full. Let 
let the church say, say amen. Oh, oh, oh God, let the church 